Hi, I'm Ronnie. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Hi, I'm Nick. Hi, I'm Bob, and this is the first day in the life of Station 20. Yeah, this morning was a ceremony um, to uh, open the station uh, in a uh, COVID friendly way, I guess you could say, um, where we had uh, the firefighters of Station 20 that are assigned here, as well as um, some chief officers and uh, board of directors um, and some other uh, staff uh, present. Essentially small uh, ceremony to open the station in a what I would consider a, a traditional way with a raising of the flag, and saluting the flag, and pushing the truck into the station, um, all very kind of old school, but um, important tradition uh, for opening a station. I didn't sleep great last night because I'm, I was just so excited. I've been um, thinking about this for a long time and um, the day is finally here and I just couldn't believe it was here. And then it was a, a real honor and super special that I was able to open the station. The, the response time into the backcountry as well as kind of some southern areas uh, over off of uh, MacArthur Griggs Post and those areas over there, uh, this rig, first of all, being an engine, it's just faster than the tower truck. The tower truck is inherently slower. It's just a slower rig. So getting to the backcountry slower, way more difficult for the tower truck to maneuver in the backcountry a little bit uh, because of the roads and the way that the curves are and that sort of thing. It just is a slower response. The engine is faster, more nimble, uh, and then it's a great location to get to the backcountry as well as these kind of other pockets that had poor response times to some degree. Yeah, so everybody on this fire engine is medically trained. Uh, there's not a medic unit here uh, because essentially when you break down the data for uh, the call, call volume and the necessity for, for those particular uh, rigs, at this point, uh, this area of Highlands Ranch is covered well with uh, the medic units that are in place, and that's Medic 17, Medic 18, Medic 16, uh, with occasionally Medic 15 having to come in. Uh, but there's good coverage there, and uh, it's not warranted at this time. 
But that doesn't mean that the, fu the future wouldn't hold a medic unit here someday um, if the call volume warrants it. This station was built to uh, accommodate a medic unit. And we spent some time today with, the, with Douglas County traffic engineers testing the system one last time. It had been tested a little before, but testing it one last time to ensure that when we, when we respond, we're capturing traffic lights appropriately and they're delayed appropriately, they, they cycle appropriately, um, and we're very committed to making sure that, that, that we ensure that that's gonna be safe, especially with the school being here. And that. There was quite a bit of uh, engineering that went involved in um, all of these traffic lights. Uh, some crazy engineering, actually, with GPS and uh, Opticom systems and all sorts of stuff. So it's pretty impressive. I feel confident that it's gonna be very, very safe. Gathering up some food items that we forgot to get out of our cabinet from the previous station. Um, some personal stuff, chips and energy, workout stuff. Um, will you just go snag that in the front seat of that video truck? That food that's in that cabinet, you guys can do whatever you want. Like shift one? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking through that earlier. That, or like there's that coffee, is that yours at the top? Yeah. You grab that? Yeah. We will use our siren and air horn uh, when it's necessary. And a lot of times that's at uh, major intersections. Um, and to, to be honest, these roads in Highlands Ranch are favorable for emergency response because they were designed wide and multiple lanes. And a lot of times uh, we, we don't have to use a lot of um, sound to control traffic. So we're able to res respond without a lot of sound. Um, we have to use some because it's the law for us to make some sound, but we don't use it uh, excessively if we don't have to. on the cat here. Okay. Not this right, but coming up soon, a right. It's Grace Boulevard. Okay. This building, right? Yeah. Yep. Dispatch engine 20. Ooh, sound good. Go ahead. On scene, three story large high school. Nothing shown. We do have somebody out here talking, waiting to talk to us. We'll be investigating. Guys. 
No. no. So you don't need us? No. All right, so let me uh, take you guys around the station. So this is our entryway into uh, kind of the main living quarters here. We'll go ahead and head this way. Um, so in here we have the uh, officers, kind of computer workroom and stuff. This is where he does most of his reports for any sort of medical call that we run, fire alarm, fire, anything like that. Um, also, if he needs to meet with the guys or anything like that, normally he does that in here. Uh, as we come in here, this is kind of the main living area. This is our kitchen and then um, our living room. Um, so one cool thing about Station 20 is that everything in here is brand new. We're super fortunate to have all new stuff that's really well made and um, it's all just very nice. We have four fridges here for A shift, B shift, and C shift and then we just have a uh, kind of a station fund fridge that we keep uh, condiments and things like that in. Um, same thing over here with the cabinets, A shift, B shift, C shift, and then um, station fund. Um, this is where we do most of our online trainings and things like that. We really don't hang out in here too much. Um, so here on the west side of the station, uh, we have a really cool patio at Station 20 here. Um, it overlooks the, the mountains and most of the Highlands Ranch area. Uh, this is where we have our grill and our trigger. And in the future, we're planning on putting a table and chairs out here. Just a place to hang out, really. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic view, and it, it looks incredible. Um, so as we go in here, um, since this is a brand new station, everything is pretty pretty bare right now. Uh, we don't have anything in any of these cabinets yet, but uh, we can either do food or you know towels for the kitchens. Um, just kind of depends on whatever we need it for, really. But just lots of space because we have a lot of things. So in here, these are the bunk rooms. Um, Station 20 has six bedrooms and three bathrooms. Um, each one of these, again, everything in here is brand new, so we're still just working on getting everything put together and uh, making it our home. This is one of our bathrooms here. another bedroom and another bathroom. Um, they'll, they'll all be the same for the most part, except for the officers. The officers have a desk and a phone in their bedrooms. Um, so this is our, our uh, kind of washroom. This is where we keep the, the um, laundry stuff, um, where we have all the things that we use to clean the floors and like the, the tabletops, things like that. We have an ice maker in here and um, Mostly just our supplies and things like that. So again, this is just more area for storage. Um, <laughs> we don't have anything in here either. Uh, we're still just working on getting everything put together. It's quite a long process to set up uh, uh, a brand new firehouse. So in here, this is the firefighter's office. Um, this is where we can do our own reports, um, get fresh radio batteries, uh, check emails, do trainings, um, 
yeah, really anything that the firefighters need to do is this is where it happens. So if you come through here, this is the entryway into the um, into the apparatus bay, and we use these spaces basically as a as a kind of cancer clean area. So there's a bathroom in here if you need to wash off or anything like that, but it's it's airlocked so that we can try and keep out as much of that um, hazardous material as possible. Um, just keeping up with cancer prevention and things like that for uh, South Metro. So out here into the bay, this is, so this is gonna be our, our engine. Um, we're in a reserve engine right now. Our, our frontline engine is supposed to be coming uh, in April. Um, this is what we'll respond to on medical calls, fires, fire alarms, really any sort of public assist or anything like that. Um, then if we go over here, this is uh, Brush Engine 20. Um, this is a Type 3 engine. Um, we'll use this on any wildland deployment or anything like that. This is a wildland house, so this is going to be one of the first units to deploy on a wildland fire. Uh, we can also use these uh, if we have big snowstorms or anything like that, we'll basically take all of our gear, put it on this brush truck, and then we will uh, respond to calls in the brush truck. And that's just because it's four-wheel drive. It has um, a higher wheelbase, and it, it's less likely to get stuck in the snow. So right here is um, our cart. And so at Station 20, there's a large area um, just to the south of us, and that's called the Back Country for Highlands Ranch, and uh, we have a lot of people that will go running there, uh, mountain, mountain bike, um, really any sort of outdoor activity, and they can get pretty far back in there. Um, so we use this cart to uh, get to them if they get hurt or anything, and they can't, they can't get off the trail on their own. So um, this comes in handy quite a bit uh, for anybody that's injured or anything like that in the back country. So this is our FDO truck. Um, again, this is a wildland house. So we can have, uh, we use this truck for single resource response. Um, anybody that is working in logistics or planning and operations in wildland fires, um, they'll take this truck out and then they can, they can respond from, from the station in this truck. And it's basically got everything that they need um, for their wildland deployment. If we come over here, this is our tool room. This is just where we can work on any of our hand tools or hose if we need to. Um, we've got spare bottles here. Um, this is where we'll keep all of our, kind of our station maintenance stuff. So lawn mowers, um, snow blowers. Yeah, that's really about it for the tool room here. So if we come over here, this is going to be our uh, EMS closet. So uh, all of our engines are at the very least BLS capable. So they have a certain amount of medical equipment on them. Um, this is where we can come to restock. So if we don't get restocked from the medic units, what we can do is just use the stuff that's, that's in here. So in here is our bunk room. This is where we just keep all of our bunker gear. Um, every, every firefighter that's at this station, um, that's bid into this station is a wildland firefighter. So we all have our own wildland uh, packs, 14 day bags, and, um, and then just our regular backup bunker gear. <sighs> Coming over here, this is, so this, if you can imagine the washroom inside of the living quarters, this is kind of the washroom for the bunk area. So we use this area for our truck towels to wash them. Just, again, we're just big on cancer prevention and things like that, so we're trying to keep all this stuff separate. Um, this big guy right here is our extractor, uh, and that's for our bunker gear and everything like that, so we can put all, the, all of our dirty bunker gear in there wash it, dry it, and then, uh, and then it's clean for us. And that's also why we have a second set of bunker gear. So if we come up here, yeah. Uh, so this is gonna be our wildland cache area. It's empty right now. We just don't have the lockers for it yet. 
but uh, this is basically going to be the area for any sort of anything that you would need for a 14 day deployment like water, MREs, uh, extra hose, our tents, um, we'll eventually store our 14 day bags up here um, but that's what this area is going to be for. It's just going to be for anything that you would need to grab quickly for a 14 day deployment. Um, so this is Station 20's weight room. Um, it's just right here on the other side of the bay. Uh, this is this is going to be the basic South Metro complement of workout equipment um, that you'll see through throughout any South Metro station. Um, we'll come in here normally once a day. Some guys make it in twice a day. It just kind of depends, and uh, really, it's pretty wide open on when you want to work out. Um, it's it's more of when you can work out. Um, We'll normally spend anywhere from an hour or two inside of the weight room. And uh, then once we're done, we kind of just get back to our normal station living. I'll let you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, this, is, this is just going to be our basic uh, cleaning room for for outside of, of the living area. So we'll use all this stuff for anything that's around the bay or anything like that. We have brushes for the, for the engine. Um, all of our cleaning supplies are here. Uh, we have wet wipes in case we need them for cleaning down any sort of thing inside of the cab of the engine. Um, mops for floors and things like that. This is our Opticom box here. Um, and basically what that allows us to do is if we were heading out to a call uh, right now and uh, depending on which way we were going um, down the street, either to the east or to the west, um, I can hit one of these buttons and what it'll do is actually change the light so that we can go through that specific light. Um, so if I was going to hit the right, it would go to the, the west light. And if I was hitting left, it would go to the east light. If I hit all, um, it'll it'll stop both of those lights so we can go through the through the light safely It's really nice to be able to hit this button and know that that light is now turning yellow and then red because it just doesn't turn red There's a good there's a good amount of slowing down and stopping before before we actually get the green light So that gives us the opportunity to leave the bay Come down the street and then when we get to that stoplight It's going to be green for us and then everybody else should be stopped at that stoplight so one really cool thing that we have here at Station 20 is we have uh, bifolding horizontal doors, which is something different than uh, some of the firehouses that you might see around or anything like that. And what's cool about these is they're very quiet and they're actually very fast when they open. So to open them, we can just hit a button and it's basically the same thing as a garage door opener. very fast to open and very fast to close and they really don't take up much room in the bay at all. Uh, it, it makes our lives a lot easier and then we don't have to deal with the typical issues of a, of a bay door that uh, other, other stations might. Yeah, obviously uh, COVID uh, has uh, a monkey wrench in it for now. Uh, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed that we'll move past that soon. And after that, uh, if you see us out or the bay doors are open, the trucks in the station, feel free to uh, stop by. And uh, if we don't uh, have anything going on, we're happy to uh, show you around and, and uh, give you a tour of the place and show you the truck and the kids and everything else. There's a lot of little stuff that has to be done, you know, uh, putting toilet paper on the toilet paper hanger and, um, you know, putting cups away and making sure everything's all squared away. It's uh, just like moving into a new house, for sure. Kind of a rare exception. We, this crew uh, definitely uh, eats together. I mean, we're all going to eat together tonight, but we all take turns cooking. And uh, tonight it's kind of like everybody brought their own food in just because it's, it's 
one that we decided it just might be easier to everybody kind of bring food in because we knew we were going to be busy and then we thought it was supposed to be snowing and crazy so we just brought our own food in but usually we switch off cooking eat together the fact that there's an additional firehouse and additional engine here helps the whole Highlands Ranch area in the fact that we now have another rig in place for when the other rigs are busy and 17s is one of our busiest stations. I would imagine that we'll see Engine 20 helping out the 17s district frequently just because they tend to be a much busier station. Uh, so, you know, there's some depth there for the future uh, for all of this area, including when 18s is busy, 16s even to a degree. It's just, it's a backup to those districts, provides, some, you know, that additional service. Well, we're waiting for a neighbor to see if they can get a hold of their neighbor, who happens to be in Mexico, to see if we might be able to go inside to stop the uh, smoke detectors from sounding since it's generated some concern and calls. But the, there's no indication there's any problem in the house from looking through the windows. Um, we don't see any smoke damage or smoke at all or anything like that. So see if we can get in there to help them out, get them off, but we might not be able to. It's really a high point in my career. It's a real honor um, and privilege to be able to come work at a station like this. It's beautiful. It's just um, very well done. The, the citizens of Highlands Ranch should be commended and I thank them for, for supporting us. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's great to be part of an organization uh, that has the community support that we have. It's, it's just very special.